Growing up, I was always a collector of sorts, like always curating shelves of precious objects. Having lost people that were really close to me, a parent and then a grandparent later on, being left with objects instead of people as a sort of way of being connected, kind of, I think, charged the meaning of objects for me in a pretty serious way. When I ended my time at MassArt, there were things that I felt conflicted about in terms of making pictures and things that weren't fully satisfying. And um, after graduate school in 2000, and 11, I moved back to Portland and came to my studio um, and spent a year making um, still lives, photographing these still lives here and was making the props using only the tools that I knew. So basically using the miter saw and a belt sander to generate these props purely for the purpose of photographing. But gradually as my like skill set widened a bit, I found myself spending more time making the props and thinking about you know, their photogenic qualities um, less and thinking about their kind of objecthood more, um, which I think is what led me to working sculpturally um, and moving away from photography. I feel like I do like to work in different materials. Um, sometimes it can drive me a little crazy, <laughs> like switching in between them and I think if there were no deadlines involved, I'd probably have like four or five different pieces going at one time in different materials and I could kind of pick up and put down those given pieces in a kind of fluid way. So my mom, who passed away when I was in high school, she, when I was younger, she gave me this ceramic peanut um, that she brought back from a work trip and it was like one of my most cherished objects and I would just open it up you know, as a kid and pull out the nuts and then close it. And it was something, there was something that was so alluring about this form. Um, and when she passed, it was one of those objects that came with me wherever I went. So, you know, in college, in grad school, later into, you know, early adulthood, it was an object that always stood out, you know, stayed out with prominence. At a certain point, I decided I wanted to remake it as I was starting to remake objects like from my life, thinking about, you know, the idea that when I was inside my mother's body, that the eggs that would become my children were also nested inside of her, thinking about those like different layers of forms nested inside another, and I think it felt like a important time to make this piece. That kind of love of a form's objecthood also relates to wanting to hold it and touch it, and so maybe there's like some part of me that is um, thinking about that when I'm making forms. I would say never do I keep a form at the scale that it exists in originally. And in a funny way, like making, remaking a form changes my relationship to it, right? Like so there might be sentimental or personal reasons that draw me to a particular form, but in remaking a form, I kind of, all of that is undone and I come to know the form in a new way, which I love. You know, so for the large folding fan, the first one that I made from one that has fabric was based on a fan that belonged to my maternal grandmother and was a form that I'd wanted to make for a while. Here I have a collection of three prototypes that are for the first folding fan I made um, that has fabric in it. And the one on the far left was just me cutting slats of available wood um, on the bandsaw, so it's definitely irregular. But I just wanted to sort of see what the form would look like before I even moved forward. And then these two pieces are um, plywood um, prototypes at the scale of the first piece and then this is a piece I'm working on next that will actually hang closed um, on the wall and um, yeah it's helpful to have these plywood versions to work through to do tests to figure out like material whether I'm using fabric or cord um, uh, because inevitably there are always some small tweaks that need to be made in terms of um, the construction of the piece, um, and it's nice to not have to um, work out those errors with the actual hardwood. 
moving it around, it, I think, opened up different associations, whether it was, you know, from the natural world, thinking of shell forms or architectural spaces, you know, like spiral stairs or thinking about dancing, like it, it almost opened up, it looks like a, a skirt spread out. And when I found out that the Farnsworth was considering acquiring the fan, I mean, I'm thrilled to think about an early piece um, of this kind, like it being in a collection in the state that I live. It's a total honor. You know, when I had wanted to show my grandmother's fan originally, I thought I would show it closed um, and not open. Um, and I, that had been my intention, but as I was making it, I'm like, why, why would I do that? Like, you know, why am I committed to just showing this form closed? And I think I just start to think about like sort of a matrilineal legacy and this idea of, of a woman taking up space, you know, physical space, and it felt like, you know, how could I show this form closed? Like it should be open and, you know, uh, permitted to take up as much space as possible. And I think thinking about a form's latent potential and my late mother and my late grandmother like never realized, like it felt like sort of a gesture to allow the fan to be fully opened.